to kick off the GIA Demo Day, please welcome to the stage Managing Director, Global Insurance Accelerator, Dan Israel. Welcome uh, to, I had a really wonderful start to this planned out and what I was going to say. And I saw Nicole as I walked into this room and she did not tell me how amazing this was going to feel. <laughs> and for those that don't know me, I am Dan Israel. I have the unbelievable honor to be the managing director of the Global Insurance Accelerator. I cannot, well, thank you, Coley. <laughs> I cannot wait for you to hear from these seven amazing, amazing founders that we have spent the last 100 days with in our program. The thriving in a challenging environment, or a changing environment, rather, topic for this um, symposium is so appropriate for where we find ourselves today in this industry. But it's also incredibly apropos to what we think about at the Global Insurance Accelerator and how we think about what InsureTech can do. InsureTech is all about finding the opportunities in this changing world. And I am so excited for you to hear from these seven amazing founders today. Before we get to that, I wanna spend a little bit of time telling you about the Global Insurance Accelerator that I have such a joy leading, uh, who we are, what we do, and why we do it. But at the Global Insurance Accelerator, we believe that early stage founders, like the ones that you'll hear today, and early stage insure techs, like the ones that they're leading, can change not only our industry, but in fact, truly change the world. The Global Insurance Accelerator has been around for nine years. We start our 10th year in July, and we're incredibly proud. I know Brian's in here too, and I'm incredibly proud to follow Brian Hemasath and Nicole Gunderson in this role, and to leverage the, the, what they've built. Uh, over the last nine years, we have built a mentor-driven accelerator program. We have 120 plus mentors from across every discipline within insurance, across every role in insurance, and they work with our founders one-on-one -on -one to help them solve the unique problems that they are looking to solve within the industry to grow their business. As I said, they've spent 100 days with us. We run a hybrid program. They spend the first month of January in, uh, in Des Moines here. I think Kathy got to see her first snowstorm ever in January, so we were very excited about that. They go virtually back to wherever they are in the world for the middle two months of the program and then we bring them back here in April so that they can celebrate with all of you today. We make real capital investments in these organizations and I'm now noticing that they would be mad at me but my slides didn't show up right. But we make real capital investments in each of these firms. We're early stage and so oftentimes we're the first bit of external money that gets put into these organizations and we're incredibly proud to be that first check. And what you can't see is that we're 100% focused on insurance, which makes us unique. We were the first original insure tech focused accelerator, an insurance focused accelerator. And importantly, we do that here in Des Moines, Iowa. And I heard today that we were one of the hubs of insurance. And I think we are the hub of insurance here in Des Moines, Iowa. Thank you. And I say that because of the, the facts that you heard, right? 200 insurance companies in the state, but more importantly, and or not more importantly, but including the reason, we have so many amazing partners, whether it be local government, and I can see Commissioner Oman, who's one of our best partners uh, that we can have. Uh, but the ecosystem that supports founders here in Des Moines is second, I believe, to none. But we also take the global in our name incredibly seriously. Over the past nine years, we've had over 25% of our companies have come from international locations. You'll hear from two of them today, our newest two from Poland and Australia. But over the last nine years, we've had 11 countries outside of the United States represented and five continents represented in that cohort. I simply could not do what I do without my amazing team. And in fact, I play an incredibly small role in what we do. Uh, we all three of us are new within this last program cycle and I'm so lucky to get to do this work with these two fine people. So Jess Lewis is our program manager and as a founder said to me in our program last week, Jess is the one at the GIA that makes our world spin. Simply our program doesn't go off without Jess and I can't do it without her. I'm so excited to have her on the team.
And Jim Lewis actually may look familiar to some of you because he was on this stage in 2019 with his own company, which was Predictive Health Partners at the time and was Benjamin. He sold that company a year ago and we convinced him in December to join us as our alumni director, which is a new role for the GIA and he'll tell you a little bit more about that as we move forward. So Jim, welcome to the team. Importantly though, there's a part that I haven't talked about about the GIA, and that is the part that we can't do what we do without them. They are our investors and our sponsors. The companies that you see on the screen are some of the most innovative insurance companies in the industry, and we are incredibly proud to work with all of them. They don't just provide the capital that we need to invest in these amazing founders or run our operations, they provide our team with the strategic board leadership that we need. They provide mentors, they provide support, they provide office space occasionally for some of the founders when they need a place to go and to stay in. But we simply couldn't do what we do without these amazing companies. And my hope is that if you're representing one of these companies in the audience, or you have something to do with them, that as you watch these seven companies come up, you're incredibly proud of what they've accomplished because they do it with your support, so thank you. The other thing that we changed this year was that we recognized that there was an opportunity to pro provide other folks and other organizations that were interested in partnering with the GIA a way to do that without having them to be either carriers or to be investors. The companies that you see on this list are our amazing sponsors. They provide a, an incredible amount of different things for us, including from Drake University. I think our interns are in here somewhere, Owen and Marshall. Um, amazing interns that we've worked with. We have ecosystems, we have local governments, local support organizations, as well as carriers both here in Des Moines and outside of it. And we're so excited and appreciative of what they do for us too. And similarly, if you're part of one of these organizations, I hope you also take an incredible amount of pride in what we're doing. One of the things that I'm most excited about as we think about where we can grow and as Jim and Jess and I get to put our fingerprints on this organization and build off the incredible foundation that we have is thinking about new and innovative partnerships that we might be able to bring to bear. And today we've got a number of interesting little nuggets and announcements that we're looking forward to making. And the first one that I am really excited about, not the least of because I'm an alum, uh, but I'd like to welcome to the stage Dean Amy Christoph Brown from the University of Iowa to talk about a new and innovation, innovative strategic partnership that we are going to undertake together. Dean Brown. My slides are up next. All right. Hello, thank you for having me here today. Um, I apologize, you should never give uh, the mic to a faculty member and a big room of people. Um, but I only have five minutes to talk. And what I'm excited to talk to you about today is to introduce to you an opportunity that we have really embraced uh, with the Global Insurance Accelerator. And that is a partnership between our world-renowned Vaughn Institute of Risk Management and Insurance and our John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center uh, at the University of Iowa. We are thrilled to announce that we are partnering with them to set up a relationship so that we can help support what they're doing with these entrepreneurial ventures in InsureTech. We can bring our entrepreneurial expertise to the table and also the insurance expertise. Just a little bit of background so that you know, uh, we have over uh, 700 students who are currently involved in entrepreneurship training at the University of Iowa. These students range from the Tippie College of Business, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and the College of Engineering. In the Vaughn Institute, we have students who are pursuing a certificate in insurance, and those students come from all colleges across the university. And starting in fall of 2023, we will have our risk management and insurance major. This is the first time that we've had a major in risk management and insurance uh, at the University of Iowa in well over 40 years. Uh, we're not really sure why it went away to begin with, but we are very excited to have it back. And I want to acknowledge Thomas Barry Stolzel, who is the faculty director for the Vaughn Institute, for helping to generate with the Vaughn Advisory Board, which many of you may be uh, familiar with, and with Terry Vaughn's assistance as well, we've been able to create this major as a way to help serve all of the insurance companies in Iowa and beyond. And now as we bring all of those capabilities together with the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center, we think the possibilities for synergy here are just tremendous. 
as we explored the opportunities with Jim and Dan, we've talked about four key areas where we think we can really partner for success. First of all is on working with curriculum. We have entrepreneurship faculty, we have entrepreneurship uh, startups, we have groups that are working every day on how do you create successful entrepreneurial ventures. So we're going to partner with them on curriculum for the accelerator, which should be terrific. Student projects are another opportunity that we're always looking for. We really try to involve our students in very experiential projects, meaning they get data real-world data, and they help you solve problems. And so this is an opportunity for our students to dig in deep on some of the projects that you may not be able to get to or simply don't have the person power to be able to address, and they would be useful uh, projects for you to know about. Market research, for example, anything with analytics. We've got such a strong analytics program in the Tippy College, great students who can bring those skills to bear. So opportunities for experiential projects is just terrific. And then internships. One of the exciting things about an accelerator that's been around for 10 years is there's alumni, and there's alumni businesses. And those businesses could really use some additional person power to help fuel them to continue to get ahead. So opportunities for internships for our students are also a wonderful way that we can help support all of these companies that are coming out of the accelerator. And we have ways to help support them financially as well as bringing you great students. And then finally, uh, we are involved in many, many, many pitch competitions. Uh, we have our faculty and our, our panel of mentors engaged in these kinds of activities all the time. So wherever we can be helpful in terms of providing additional judging support, uh, additional ideas about how to sort of select and help companies thrive, we want to be involved in it. So I am very excited to be a part of this. It's a wonderful opportunity for the University of Iowa, Tippie College of Business, Vaughn Institute of Risk Management and Insurance, and the John Papa John Entrepreneurial Center at Iowa. We are thrilled to be involved with this company, uh, thrilled to get started and to see some of these amazing entrepreneurial ventures that we can't wait to get behind. So thank you for giving me a couple of moments today. I know you're really excited to hear about these new ventures and what they're bringing to the table, uh, and we are excited to support them. So thank you so much. Okay, I promise that, that I will talk for a very short amount of time, but it is now time for me to get out of the way and to introduce the 2023 GIA final pitches. Uh, if you've been here before, you know uh, that I have two asks. The first one is that if anything that you hear today intrigues you, excites you, you have questions about, you don't think will work, but you really wanna push that founder on, find these folks. They want to talk to you. They've spent the last 100 days because they want to be a part of this ecosystem and they are really looking forward to it. So uh, they'll be at the reception tonight at American Enterprise, 5 to 7 p.m. Please, everybody should go. Um, but please find them out. And if you can't talk to them tonight, contact Jess, Jim, or I. We would love to put you in contact with them. The second request that I have is a GIA tradition. And if you've been here before, you know what I'm about to ask you to do. Because an insurance conference is very much like a rock concert, what we would like to do is as each of these founders come to the stage, we want to welcome them to the stage with a standing ovation and a huge round of applause. It helps them to get so excited to do their best pitch for you and it helps kind of raise the energy in the room. So we're going to practice with our first mentor presenter. So please join me with a huge GIA welcome to Travis Grassel who's introducing Emilio Health. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to Des Moines, Iowa. It is a pleasure to be a part of the GIA, the GIS, and the insurance ecosystem, knowing we mutually protect so many and so much. Hello, my name is Travis Grassel, Property and Casualty Actuary for the Iowa Insurance Division. For those of you unfamiliar with Iowa's state motto, here it is, our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. That foundation gives innovative solutions that come to Iowa the opportunity and platform from which to be greatly successful. Governor Reynolds and Commissioner Ullman and their teams are all about innovation 
and moving our economy and the insurance industry forward. This mindset has allowed me to have the good fortune of being a GIA mentor since 2019. This year, I and others were selected to mentor Kathy Hubble, CEO and founder of Emilio Health. I am extremely confident that Emilio Health can help individuals as well as insurers in dramatic ways. So, without further ado, coming all the way from down under, please stand and join me in giving a warm, from the heartland welcome to Kathy Hubble. Thank you very much, and thank you so much for this opportunity. And I know my accent's a little bit tough, but I'm sure you'll get through. <laughs> my name's Kathy Hubble, and I'm from Emilio Health. I'm the CEO and founder. Chronic pain is the leading cause of disability globally. Emilio Health is all about reducing chronic pain, reducing opioid use, and reducing time out of work but we also want to reduce claims costs. I have a background of 25 plus years in chronic pain management, so I've seen what works and what doesn't work. My co-founder, Stephane McSweeney, is a doctor of osteopathy and a molecular biologist, and also a master's of rehab in pain medicine. We are supported by a fantastic team who, would, who their expert subject matter supports our every need. In America, one in five people have chronic pain, and you've had over 106,000 deaths annually from prescription opioid overdose. So it's fair to say that nearly everyone in this room has been touched in some way by chronic pain and the suffering surrounding it. But you're insurers, so you would be really interested to know that insurers paid out over $635 billion in income replacement payments and medical interventions. And 90% of those costs actually came from 20% of claims. These are the ones that persist past the point of tissue healing at about the three to six month mark. Emilio Health has a proven program, digital therapeutic solution that reduces chronic pain and opioids. But we support it with wearable technology and remote monitoring and a behavioral score that comes from our learning platform. All of this data feeds into machine learning and then to our live health coaches who can nudge change behaviour 24-7. But that's not all it can do. We actually have the ability to have predictive analytics on this data, which means we can identify who will actually end up with chronic pain. Our eight-week program is embedded with core competencies and live data from the wearables, as I said, and every behavioural score is actually reported back to the insurer at weeks two, four and eight. So the very first time we have the visibility of a person in their own environment 24 hours a day how pain is affecting their life. I'd like to introduce you to Denise. Now, Denise did our program in 2021, and she eliminated her pain in eight weeks and went back to work full time. She had a simple injury at work. She rolled her ankle, and over the next three years, she rolled it a few more times. She was commenced on opioids quite early, and then eventually she had surgery, a reconstruction of the ankle. Post-operatively, she was converted to higher dose opioids such as Endone or as you would call it, Oxynorm. And she was started on gabapentin. One of the side effects of gabapentin is 
that it causes swelling and redness and inflammation. Opioids cause hyperalgesia, which is an escalation in the sensitivity of the nervous system. Now, she had a pain score of 9 out of 10, and a pain specialist diagnosed her with complex regional pain syndrome. Now, this is when light touch on the skin actually feels like you're raking barbed wire through it. That's what she was diagnosed with. Multiple treatments failed, but she also, when she started on our program, had oxygen saturations of 85%. We were able to pick this up on the wearable. Why is that important? Well, in ICU, we actually intubate them at 85%. So she became really engaged in her data and she took it on herself to decide to cease all of her medications. Not quite how we'd do it, but that's what she decided. By week four, she was off all medication and by week six, she had no pain. Went back to work and she had, was working 50% of the time. By week eight, she was back at work 100% of the time. Now, this indicated to us that she actually had a medication-induced form of complex regional pain syndrome. Interesting. How does this start? How does this vicious cycle start? It starts with an initial injury, then we have opioids in the mix, and we start with these pain behaviours where they avoid doing things. Maybe they'll have surgery interventions. This causes more trauma to the nervous system and the opioids cause sensitivity. All of this creates more and more distortion of the nervous system. This develops into chronic pain, but it doesn't stop there. It keeps going around and around and around. Further interventions, depression and anxiety, repeated treatment failures, more nervous system distortion, and eventually chronic pain just keeps building. So how do you break that cycle? Well, we did it. In 2021, we actually had 76 people go through our program, and they were all in that group from three to uh, 10 years in claim duration, 83% completion rate. 95% of those people actually reached a capacity where they could return to work. Most importantly, though, we had 60% of people reduce their opioids and cease them altogether. We also halved their pain score on average. That's the difference between functioning and not functioning. So we've had some great traction along the way. We partnered early with some great rehabilitation providers in Australia. And then what we learned in that time, we actually put into redeveloping the platform from a phone app into a web app so people could access it anywhere in the world on any device. And we relaunched to direct to insurers. We've won a lot of awards for return to work, innovation in digital health. And because we're now an independent uh, structure or company, we are now meeting all of our HIPAA and SOC 2 compliance. So I'll give you a bit of a case study on value. On a disability claims book, we might have 10,000 claims, more than three months long, and each one has a reserve of around 400,000. You just nod if I'm correct. <laughs> and with our program, the cost of our program and the outcomes that we're able to achieve, there's a possibility to release over $2.5 billion on those 10,000 claims. Now, we do have competitors in this space, but nobody's using AI-driven health coaching and nudging 24-7 to drive behaviour change. So if you want to reduce chronic pain, you want to reduce opioid use, return to work, and you want to reduce claims costs and also reduce the burnout of your claims managers, Emilio Health would like to help you thrive in a changing world.
Thank you. Hello, my name is Brock Sheck, and I work for Global Atlantic Financial Group, and I head up our InsurTech strategy. Now, much like the founders presenting today, Global Atlantic's story is centered around an entrepreneurial spirit as we began as a startup under, within Goldman Sachs. And so, as we move forward and try and help these groups, we were really excited about rejoining the GIA this year and look forward to that partnership, continuing that partnership as we move forward. Now, personally for me, being a mentor was extremely rewarding, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with our next founder. His energy and passion have been a breath of fresh air for me, as well as just his belief in what he is doing and his commitment to making this industry better. And so I'm sure you'll all be just as impressed as I am with him and his company. So please join me in welcoming Diego Tanton, founder and CEO of Invive. Thank you so much for the amazing introduction, Brock. How's it going, everyone? I'm Diego, and I'm the founder and CEO at Invive. At Invive, we're bringing insights from the science of aging to reimagine underwriting for life insurance. So for five years leading up to starting Invive, I did research at Johns Hopkins and the National Institute on Aging using bioinformatics and machine learning to better understand how the process of aging works on a biological level. My partner, John, has 30 years of experience in the life insurance space, and the rest of my team includes two life insurance actuaries, an epidemiologist, and two experts in insurance regulation. At Invive, we believe that cutting edge science should be accessible. Life insurance carriers, many of whom are over 100 years old, know that the underwriting process needs to evolve in order for them to stay modern. By giving underwriters an accessible, AI-powered tool that takes their risk assessment to the forefront of science, we're making this easier than ever. Everyone has two ages, a calendar age and a biological age. And the science of aging tells us that 50% of people are actually biologically older than what the calendar says. Your biological age is a number that quantifies your unique rate of aging in terms of the risk that it poses on your health. For me personally, the constant stress of being a founder has caused me to age extremely quickly. So while I might be in my 20s, I actually have the biological age of a 65-year-old. <laughs> to all the carriers in the room right now, what if you knew who was healthy and who wasn't five years before traditional signs of disease showed themselves? What kind of lift would that provide to your underwriting? In recent years, we've learned two important things about aging. One that most major diseases are simply manifestations of the biological aging process, and two, that the rate of biological aging itself can be measured. By measuring the rate of aging, which is the root cause of most diseases, we're able to give underwriters a higher resolution picture of each applicant's health. So roughly a quarter of each individual who goes through underwriting for life insurance is what we call a fast ager. A fast ager is someone whose biological age is significantly greater than their calendar age. For each fast ager that goes through underwriting undetected, we estimate that this costs a carrier $4,600 in lost premiums annually. Additionally, for a carrier that's issuing around 100,000 policies a year, this adds up to taking on a total direct cost of $200 million in extra future claims over a five-year period. At Invive, we've developed the first model of biological aging that was designed specifically for use in life insurance underwriting. Our model uses a carrier's existing data in order to calculate the rate of aging in life insurance applicants. During the underwriting process, carriers collect a large number of molecular biomarkers, but only a small fraction of those biomarkers actually end up getting used directly in risk guidelines. That being said, we designed our model 
specifically to leverage those surplus biomarkers that are already collected during the underwriting process, but which tend to get overlooked. And as a result, our biological age risk factor does not overlap whatsoever with the information that's already contained in existing underwriting guidelines. Because we're operating at the level of risk selection, using our underwriting tool doesn't require any kind of product refiling on the part of a carrier. Additionally, since we're not using third-party data, it's much easier for us to be compliant with IIPRC underwriting standards and emerging regulations on AI. Finally, by using electronic health records as a potential source of data, we, uh, the biological age metric that we provide can act as a powerful addition to accelerated underwriting programs. In our white paper, we did a underwriting validation study on a cohort of 15,000 individuals, followed for over 15 years, recording around 1,200 deaths. What we found in the study was that there was a significant number of undetected fast agers in each risk class that we looked at. When we applied biological age in conjunction with traditional underwriting uh, factors and guidelines, what we found was that the resulting underwriting, underwriting protocol increased risk selection accuracy um, fourfold, increased the stratification between risk classes by fourfold, and it reduced the mortality experience of the preferred class in particular by 10%. Additionally, when we looked at the rate of aging as an unadjusted predictor of mortality, we found that being a fast ager was actually a better indicator of early death than smoking status, obesity, and low income status. So to put that in perspective, a life insurance carrier in 2023 wouldn't be competitive if they neglected to take into account smoking status. By 2030, we believe the same will be the case for using bioage. So those carriers who adopt biological age early will be at a significant advantage over their competitors in particular. By being smarter about how they underwrite, they'll be able to take a larger slice of the healthy pie of applicants who are on the market. In contrast, those carriers who are slower to adopt um, will end up with a higher concentration of fast agers on their books and an overall higher mortality experience. That being said, we we're currently allowing carriers to become an Invive early adopter today. We are actively looking for pilots, which will allow us to calibrate our model on your unique policyholder data as a life insurance carrier, and also show you how much money you stand to save from using our underwriting tool. Additionally, we can look at your existing book of business and show you what percentage of that book of business is composed of fast agers versus slow agers, and how that will impact your mortality experience in years to come. We're also looking to raise an angel round in the lead up to our launch, so come chat with me afterwards if you're interested and want to learn more. I want to thank everyone for being here. It's been a fantastic experience being a part of this accelerator, and I'm excited for what the future holds. Thanks, everyone, and good night. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's uh, Dave DeCap. I am the uh, Senior Vice President of Marketing for Farmers Mutual Hale Insurance Company uh, and also a GIA board member. Um, we're, at FMH, we're super proud to be a founding investor in the GIA. And as we enter our 10th year, really excited to see uh, uh, where we can continue to, to push this program to where it can go. However, I'm just as excited to announce our next company, Refocus AI. I was lucky enough to serve as a mentor this year during the program, and um, I got to tell you, the, it, I, I continue to be amazed and astounded by how much the momentum can continue to accelerate during this short window, and Colby and team have definitely done that. So actually, I'll just stop there and let's introduce him now. Would you please stand and uh, help me welcome Colby Tunick, CEO of Refocus AI. Wow. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Dave. Farmer Mutual Hale, one of our fantastic mentors from the Global Insurance Accelerator. Good afternoon, everyone. My, thank you. All right. My name is Colby Tunick. It's my privilege to be one of two co-founders at Refocus AI. 
our retention analytics platform. At Refocus, we believe in great relationships. Everyone here in this room knows who your great relationships are with. Family, friends, colleagues. For Gen Z, it's TikTok. I believe that when you choose as an individual to purchase a product or a service from an insurance company, what you're actually looking for is to belong. That's why at Refocus AI, our mission is to help you create deeper and more meaningful connections between yourself and your policyholders. AI is complex. I actually asked ChatGPT Tab and it told me. <laughs> In the last three years, there have been plenty of examples of artificial intelligence not living up to its stated promise. So what makes our company, Refocus AI, any different? To set expectations, these next six minutes are not gonna be a tech deep dive. My co-founder and I have done the same exact work with retention and customer analytics in our past life and other industries. At companies you may know like Walmart, Xfinity, Nielsen, and other members of the Fortune 50. We've also proven that this technology actually works here in insurance because we're currently in use at both insurance brokers and carriers, where we have helped save tens of millions of dollars in the last two years in insurance premium that would have otherwise left. As an industry, we've always gravitated towards numbers like premium increase to predict retention. Carriers have said for years that if you raise rates at any one time, over 10%, policyholders who otherwise wouldn't would start shopping. But in this economic environment where everyone is taking massive rates simultaneously, that logic isn't as valuable now as it once was. Our work with partners has revealed that premium increase is not a statistically accurate indication of which of your policyholders are most likely to leave. We've looked at over 10 million policyholders going back a decade to show this. Instead, we're finding that information that you already have, like the number of individuals in a household under the age of 21, to be far more predictive. So if we know that our current method as an industry of predicting retention isn't holding water, where does that leave us? To understand our path forward, I'd like to introduce you to John. John is one of our customers and is the chief underwriting officer at a super regional carrier in the American Northwest with $750 million in annual premiums. 60% of John's book consists of policyholders with less than $20,000 in total written premium across all of their policies. These policies have a high acquisition cost to premium ratio and a low lifetime value. John's company has found it challenging to service these policies profitably, leading to high churn but as these policies make up the majority of their book, 60% or more, not servicing them led John's company to lose $60 million a year in premature retention. When John reached out to us, they had an 88% retention rate. Out of the 12% of customers who were leaving annually, 90% of this was coming from these lower value policies. And like many here, John's company couldn't afford to spend billions on ads like a tier one carrier to make up the difference between their growth goals and replacing lost customers. Knowing something needed to change, John reached out to us seeking sustainable growth. So how did John make servicing this portion of their book profitable? The answer, predictive retention analytics. It's what enables companies we work with like John's to spend far less on ads and still compete with tier one carriers while hitting their growth goals. For the first time, it's generally available. Five years ago, if you wanted a predictive retention solution, you would have to build it in-house. John tried, but they couldn't continue to spend millions of dollars on expensive data scientists that were already at capacity to have the project stretch for years without realizing any tangible value. But now you can purchase this technology without the upfront and ongoing staffing costs with the pay-as-you-go, usage-based pricing model with no setup fees. And when targeted at the portion of your book that's not profitable to service today, Retention analytics is a game changer. For John, this meant going from an 88% retention rate to a 90% retention rate in 11 months, capturing an additional $15 million in policyholder premium that would have walked right out the door. On the flip side, John was also able to identify their preferred customers and target these individuals with initiatives to build brand loyalty. Because in insurance, competing on price or marketing spend is not sustainable. The only way to stop is to help your policyholders understand why what they get through you is better, different, and unique. 
That's the opportunity that predictive retention analytics provide. The best predictive retention analytics use your data because you can't use nationwide data to predict what a GEICO customer will do. Within your data set, risk exposure and change to risk exposure over time are the best indications of churn. Essentially, we look at the same data points an underwriter does when they price the policy, but to predict retention. And we do it more accurately than net promoter score, customer satisfaction survey, or premium change. With retention analytics, you get a statistically accurate indication of who's most likely to leave, as well as a reason why. So rather than fight your competition head on, carve out a niche that allows you to be more nimble and move faster. And for John, that was three things. Using retention analytics to predict which of your policyholders are most likely to leave and why. Using your data to generate these custom actionable insights and improving your lifetime value while simultaneously maximizing your marketing spend. Retention is complex, so let's tackle it together. We've done it before and we're doing it right now. We have three more spots open this year for pilots. As we just opened our office here in Des Moines, we would love to have those companies be here in the Midwest so we can continue contributing back to this community, which has already given us so much. Thank you all for your time, and I look forward to speaking with you after. Good afternoon, I'm Jeremy Harrington. I'm Director of Experience for Benefits and Protection at Principal Financial Group. I have the great honor today to introduce Zachary Tempesta and Lightship Neuroscience. Over the past decade of partnership with Major League Baseball, the founding team at Lightship Neuroscience has developed and refined their cutting edge predictive neural analytics centered on brain performance. Now, partnering with auto insurers and commercial fleets, instead of front offices, Lightship is making the world safer one driver at a time. Please help me welcome Zach Tempesta and Lightship Neuroscience. Hello. Everyone, thank you for coming. Is my mic on? Cool. Uh, so I'm one of the co-founders of Lightship Neuroscience. My name is Zachary Tempesta, coming from San Diego, California. And we are creating the neuroscience of safe driving, which is a proactive approach to a safer future. Our mission is to stop crashes and stop the loss of life on the road. We've had success, as Jeremy mentioned, in professional sports and in healthcare research. And now we're bringing our expertise and in technology into transportation safety. I need to click to the next slide. <laughs> so for me, this mission is personal. I've lost multiple family members on the road. And sadly, my family isn't the only family that has gone through this type of tragedy. At Lightship, it's personal for myself and my co-founders. My co-founders are Dr. Wesley Clapp and Dr. Brian Miller, both neuroscience PhDs. We've worked together for almost a decade now. Our journey really began in the labs at UCSF and UC Berkeley, matured in healthcare research, and really blossomed in Major League Baseball. Some of the baseball fans in the audience might recognize this film and best-selling book, Moneyball, which depicts the origins of sabermetrics in Major League Baseball. In the early 2000s, a number of innovative teams actually used advanced analytics to gain a significant competitive advantage. But eventually, the rest of the field caught up. Our technology came in in the post-Moneyball era. We introduced neuroscience-based analytics to improve player forecasting, player training, and on-field performance. We've worked in Major League Baseball for over a decade, and we've collected over 7,500 neural profiles of professional athletes. And now we're bringing our pioneering approach into commercial fleet safety. We're working with fleets, insurers, and fleet safety managers to stop crashes. So commercial fleets are experiencing a number of significant challenges, including the severe cost of just a single claim, an aging workforce, and crippling litigation. 
but the lion's share of this risk actually comes from a small population of drivers, which is currently hard to identify. Our neuroscience approach to safe driving starts by understanding the driver's neurological strengths and weaknesses. We can identify specific crash risks and develop a personalized safety program for that particular individual. This effectively safeguards their weaknesses and mitigates claims and exposure to litigation. The brain is heavily involved in safe driving with over 70% of crashes caused by poor neurocognitive performance. And the driving landscape continues to change. The advent of smartphone technology and autonomous technology puts more pressure on our brain than ever. And distractions are taking new forms every single day. Commercial driving requires performance above and beyond everyday driving. So we are looking at fundamental brain functions that are required for safe driving. Things like decision making, reactivity, hazard recognition, situational awareness, and distracted driving. April is actually Distracted Driver Awareness Month, so this is really relevant here in April. Our technology can identify top performers and higher risk drivers in just 15 minutes on a smartphone, an iPad, or a laptop. We then target tools, trainings, and technologies for our higher risk drivers, and then reward our high performers. We want to get the best talent on the most dangerous halls. Our approach starts with a driver assessment. It's quick and it's engaging, and it's built with real world dash cam footage. It outputs a driver safety guide personalized for that individual. And this only enhances existing safety technology like telematics, dash cams, electronic logging devices, and vehicle ADAS systems. There's an amazing safety infrastructure out there already and what we're trying to do is funnel these targeted interventions specifically for individuals. So to illustrate the differences in neurocognitive performance, this is Jonathan and Matthew, and this is their baseline spatial attention. This was taken when they joined a new fleet. As you can see, Jonathan and Matthew look quite different. Who would you want driving next to you? Fortunately for Jonathan, his family, the fleet, the insurance carrier, and everyone else on the road, we could actually get Jonathan's profile looking much closer to Matthew. And if this doesn't hit home, I want you guys to all think about when you were a teenager and you were driving with a grandparent. I know when I used to drive with my grandpa Jim, sometimes it was a uh, raise the heart heartbeat a little bit. Um, one time we were, my family and I were going to the airport and Somehow we made it there with Grandpa Jim driving, and God rest his soul, uh, we kissed the ground when we got there. But this is sort of like that visceral feeling of the differences amongst us. But back to John, how we can improve his safety is with a safety guide that depicts his overall risk, specific crash types that he might incur, follow-up training, optimum routes, and vehicle safety technology to safeguard his weaknesses. We're creating the neuroscience of safe driving, and we need your help. We're working with commercial insurers, fleet technology distributors, and medium to large size fleets. We're piloting our technology and looking to collaborate with transportation leaders. We are creating a safer future, and that takes everybody. At Lightship, it's personal for us, and we hope it's personal for you as well. Please come talk to me if you're interested. Let's protect our neighbors, our coworkers, our friends, and our family. And everybody drives safe. And I want to say thank you especially to the GIA and the GIS. It's been a wonderful program so far, and I'm excited to celebrate after this. But I'm also thrilled to be a part of the Des Moines community. We've worked with a number of partners already here in Des Moines, and it's been an honor and I'm looking forward to seeing what we continue to create. So thank you very much and talk to me later if uh, you want to hear more. Take care. Now please welcome GIA Program Manager Jess Lewis.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jess Lewis. I'm the program manager for the Global Insurance Accelerator. And I get the fantastic privilege to work with our inspiring founders. However, I'm also honored that I get to support, connect, and celebrate our mentors. Our mentors are the bread and the butter behind the GIA. They are involved because they truly want to see our founders thrive in the industry to grow. Their passion is infectious and is truly what makes the GIA what it is today. With a total of 122 mentors, they are a true powerhouse. From all across the United States, our mentors come together each year to ensure that our founders have the knowledge and support that they need to succeed. 55 of our mentors come straight from our investor companies. They provide a direct insight into how to operate and implement into an insurance carrier. The other 67 come from a wide range of backgrounds, experiences, and expertise within the insurance industry. From how to be a CEO to how to land a sale, our mentors know it all. At the beginning of the 100-day program, our founders meet up with up to 75 possible mentors, a process we like to call mentor speed dating. This year, we held a total of 481 mentor speed dates. Each of these meetings allowed experiences to shine and connections to grow. I can tell you personally that each of our founders left these meetings excited, inspired, and eager to learn more. At the end of the mentor speed dating process, I help our founders create their own personalized mentor pool. This pool is carefully assembled with mentors who have raised their hand to help tackle this founder's specific problems. The mentor pool continues to guide the founders throughout the rest of the program. They serve as their personal sounding boards, their connectors, and their supporters. This truly ensures that each founder receives the specialized need that they have to create and grow their businesses. On top of helping our founders one-on-one, -on -one, our mentors lead workshops, panels, and have even helped perfect the pitches that you are hearing today. Even though our founders learn so much from our mentors, I continuously hear that the main reason that our mentors are involved is because they learn from the founders too. This is because founders think differently. They're go-getters. They are constantly thinking outside of the box and challenging how things are done. This mindset is a great reminder for us all, even our mentors, to continue to push boundaries. My goal as the program manager is that both the founder and the mentors leave each meeting learning something new and inspired to continue forward. Now when I say the mentors are the bread and the butter behind the GIA, I'm really not kidding. For the 2023 program in total, our mentors put in 80 hours of mentor speed dating, 40 hours of workshops, 35 hours of pitch practice, and 190 hours working one-on-one -on -one with our founders for a grand total of nearly 350 hours. Each minute of the program would not be the same without our mentors. So if you are a mentor for the Global Insurance Accelerator, please stand. On behalf of the GIA team and our founders, thank you for your time, your energy, and your commitment. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Kelly. I am with American Enterprise Group. I'm an innovation business partner for our company. While our company's been a sponsor of this initiative for several years, this was my first year mentoring, and I couldn't be more excited and engaged about the individual that I had the pleasure to work with over the last 12 weeks. She's innovative, she's motivated, and she's ready to partner with you all 
So please join me in welcoming to the stage Marnie Goodroad with Rebuilding. Hello. Uh, I do want to really say what just said is true. We wouldn't be here without our mentors, and my pitch would not be what it is today. So with that said, I am Marnie Goodroad, founder of Rebuilding, and I forgot the clicker as well. <laughs> so I know we can all agree there is no place like your home. It's the place we create lifelong memories, raise our children, celebrate holidays, and entertain our friends and family. So it's understandable why people get so distraught after they suffer a loss in their home. This was Pete and Andrea's family home. It's where they raised their two children. They lost everything in a California wildfire. And then after so much loss, they were taken advantage of by a shady contractor. He took a $10,000 deposit, and he never returned. Pete and Andrea had an excellent carrier. They provided an ample advance, especially it was needed to help them during this time. But it did not help them from being taken advantage of from that shady contractor. I have over 28 years' experience specifically dealing with property claims. I've worked for large carriers. I've seen it from the contractor's side. And I've also represented thousands of homeowners. And during that time, I knew I could do something more. So I set out and created Rebuilding. So together, we could help millions instead of thousands by fixing the problems that exist in homeowners' claims. We will also make it easier for your adjusters, for the trusted contractors, and for the homeowners. What are the problems? Homeowners feel like they're getting poor customer service. They get really frustrated over the length of time it takes to adjust their claims. And they feel like they're getting underpaid. Doesn't mean they are getting underpaid, but they feel that way. So rebuilding was created to help carriers, assist contractors, and empower the homeowners. And by empowering the homeowners, we give them control in an out-of-control situation and allow them to become proactive parts of their claim process. And what we do is we provide immediate, direct access to insurance-vetted, trusted contractors who can immediately provide estimates, document their damage, and also do the repairs. So, rebuilding creates trust, transparency, and timing between all parties involved. How did it work? Well, after a homeowner suffers an unfortunate loss, they have the ability to join our platform. At that time, they, have, they can post a job, so contractors in their area will reach out to them. Or, they can view contractors and reach out to them. They will be able to obtain multiple estimates. We do require two. We recommend three, but they can get as many as they need and feel comfortable with. Once they choose the contractor, they will sign the contract with them through our platform. And then they will have the ability to document the entire repair process from the very first conversation with that contractor all the way through to the job completion. And once done, both the contractor and the homeowner will have access to all those documents. One in, five, or one in 20 homes, 5% suffer a loss each year. Those are your friends, your neighbors, and we hope it's not you. On top of that, 
there's an additional $100 billion in catastrophe claims per year. That number's rising. We don't always hear about the catastrophes that happen, but they're all around. So it is time for rebuilding, because what we can do is we... Oh, nope, actually. The market is huge. That's why it's time for rebuilding. Uh, 844 PC and direct insurance. And astonishingly, TPAs and adjusting services have reached $225 billion. So again, I'm going to say it's time for rebuilding because we will reduce your outside adjusting costs. We will reduce unwarranted indemnity payments, and we will reduce unnecessary litigation. I'm very proud to say we ran a successful beta. Contractors easily registered. Homeowners readily signed up. They also posted jobs. And we found out there was no loyalty to our competitors. And who are our competitors? Well, they are generally online repair platforms, such as Angie or Thumbtack, uh, independent adjusting firms and TPAs, such as Contractors Connection, Sedwick, Lackerty. But we differ from our competitors. We do not charge for leads. We do not charge to register. We also do not take a percentage of the claim or the loss estimate. And more importantly, we don't match or assign a particular contractor to a homeowner. Instead, we empower the homeowner and allow them to have the choice to select the contractor that's best suited for them. So, how do we make money? It's always free for the homeowners. We do charge contractors, but only when they secure a contract. And we will also charge carriers, but only for the information and data they request. We will be able to provide information that's not readily available today, because our job starts when the homeowner gets the estimates, and it does not end until the job's been completed. So right now, rebuilding is seeking pilots with carriers. We are a standalone product. There is no integration needed. Yes, I will be at American Enterprise, so please come talk to me. Thank you to the GIA, the GIS, the mentors, and everyone else here. I greatly appreciate your time. Good afternoon, I'm Tony Kimmy, PC Claims Vice President for Farm Bureau Financial Services. We at Farm Bureau Financial Services, like many of your companies, have been researching and utilizing artificial intelligence for several years. In the claims space, we primarily use that to identify and estimate physical damage on our auto claims. But we've never had a solution that we've found yet that can affordably and reliably and mobily identify hail claims or hail damage yet. When I saw SoftEdge's introduction at the beginning of the GIA, I was excited and I wanted to learn more. So I met, I've met with Vitaly several times and I'm excited to tell you that his calling card is a hail damage tailgate to prove the viability of his tool. That's pretty cool. But it's because that I believe the, this mobile solution has the uh, potential to reduce cycle time, to improve accuracy of claim payments and to elevate the customer experience that it's my great pleasure to introduce, all the way from Poland, Vitaly Stushkin and SoftEdge. Glicker, glicker. Hello, everyone. You all may know that some great startups have a humble beginnings sometimes started in garages. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to one such startup. My name is Vitale, I'm a co-founder of SoftEdge. We are a group of professionals with years of experience in computer vision, artificial intelligence, and augmented reality, combined with knowledge how to 
implement and use this knowledge for business automatization processes. Today, I would like to introduce you one of our solutions for hail damage assessment on the vehicles using mobile devices. As you may know, hail it's a tough moment in, uh, let's say, owner, car owner time and also insurance company claims department because hail immediately can damage hundreds or even thousands cars in a city that cause very tough times for insurance companies because it's significantly growing their workload as they need to process all those claims in a very short time and make it as accurate as possible. Unfortunately, currently, mainly all those claims are done manually and one claim can take more than an hour and additional time need to digitalize the results. We decided to address this and develop a Hellmaster Plus application. Actually, it used AI not for severity guessing, but for precise detection and measuring each dent on the car. And it doing, doing this pretty fast. We need less than a second to analyze one picture. With accuracy on a human eye level, and slightly even better, uh, inspection can be done within 15 minutes. It saves more than four times, so it can be more than four times faster than average assessment that happens right now on parking lots, on hail events. Let me show how it looks right now. So, actually, each assessment, manual assessment, it's a couple of steps. Each of them can be a problem or a point of error because of the human factor. We introducing new approach that each adjuster or technician on his mobile phone by just making a photos, going around the car anywhere, can make an assessment within 15 minutes. We're bringing transparency to estimation process, digitalization, immediate digitalization of all results, minimization of human factor, and minimization of risk related to manipulation with assessment and data. So, quick precise estimation and no cues on hail events brings the shorter time to settlement and make your policyholder car owner happier because his car will be repaired in a repair shop much faster. We know that hail, it's a big problem in the US. According to NICB, in 2020, there was about 775,000 of claims registered, but not every insurance company is reporting to NNCB, so we know this number is much bigger. And if we multiply this number to, let's say, our assessment, we can imagine that it's more than a million man hours was spent, and with average price per hour and 40 US dollars, it's more than 40 million was invested in the just assessing all those cars. With our solution, and four times faster, we can save more than $5, 567 on each dollar spent with our solution. And aiming only 10% of all claims in the year in the US, we can save for insurance company more than 3.1 million. But not only time saving. With our solution in place, we can minimize frauds, because if assessment was done with Hailmaster, insurance company can verify it and compare with claim that was reported earlier. Our solution already on the market. It's available in the App Store. And we have downloads from more than 25 countries and users are using it almost every day. Mainly those are small and medium companies, independent adjusters and repair businesses. But we are ready to offer big insurance companies and big TPAs advanced pricing models and enterprise contracts, not only mobile. Our solution is portable and we have online version can be 
immediately integrated to existing business processes is simplify the assessment process that's already in place. We know that changing of hail assessment processes is very tough and we're looking for partnership and connections with insurance companies, with TPAs, with claim service providers and repair networks to bring transparency, accuracy into the help process and make time to settlements much shorter. If you want to know more, see how application works, I'll be happy to show you. Find me. Thank you very much. Wow, the energy in the room is amazing. What a great event. Thank you, GIA. Thank you, GIS. Um, my name is Mike Pietig. I'm with Salmon's Financial Group. And this is actually Salmon's Financial Group's first year working with the GIA. And I have been overly impressed with how this operation runs and with how this whole process works. To see the insurance industry come together, get behind these founders, and really work to see these, these venture firms come from small little startups where it's an idea and a PowerPoint presentation and take that and drive it all the way to the presentations you're seeing today. And it's an amazing transformation. I have the pleasure to have been a mentor for one of these such groups, our next founder. And I've watched them really take all of this information, take the contacts, take all the mentoring, take all the advice and, and everything that the insurance industry could give them and just soak it in and build it into their product. And I think their product is one of the most amazing products because it helps us solve one of the biggest problems that we have in this industry. And it's the mounds of paper and unstructured data that we have still flowing through the insurance world. And so with that, please help me give a warm GIA welcome to Pranav Rajan from Informatic. All righty. Hello, everybody. Save the best for last, right? Or something like that. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Pranav Rajan, and I'm the COO and a co-founder at Informedic, where we provide your company with tools for fast and accurate underwriting. So the problem that we solve, as Mike gave a great explanation of, is basically that the current life insurance underwriting process is very long and expensive. Underwriters are receiving large data dumps of medical records that can be up to 1,000 pages long. Now imagine you're an underwriter. You have to scroll through every single one of these thousand pages to determine which information is useful, extract that information, and summarize that information, and use all of that information to determine how risky an applicant is. One of the current alternatives is that companies are paying third-party corporations and doctor consultations to provide summaries of these medical records, only to have to wait three, four, five business days to receive a summary that's still not very easy to access or effective. The other alternative is that underwriters are taking shortcuts. Rather than looking at the entire medical record, they're looking at just the prescription history of an applicant. In doing so, yes, it's faster, but it results in lots of inaccuracies, and it ends up having the company providing policies to individuals that they believe are lower risk than they truly are. So the solution that Informedic provides is we've built a SOC 2 and HIPAA compliant underwriting workbench that uses machine learning to streamline the entire underwriting process. There are four main components to our solution. First, an underwriter's dashboard. Second, Informedic's eight-step extraction portal. Third, our ability to take those thousand-page documents and turn them into single-page summaries within the matter of minutes. And finally, using all of that extracted data to provide a suggestion on how risky an applicant really is. So at the end of the day, we built a platform where an underwriter can go in and upload one of those five, 600, 700 page PDFs and receive a summary with all the useful information to make a decision regarding an applicant within a matter of minutes, along with the suggestion of how risky an applicant is. So now let's take a look at our product. So this is our underwriter's dashboard where an underwriter can see all of the information necessary 
to make a decision regarding an applicant, along with the medical records associated with each client. This is Informatics' eight-step extraction portal with categories and information extracted from the original PDF itself. Here is Informatics' timeline. We've implemented a variety of different features throughout our platform that allow for the underwriter not only to be able to see how an applicant's health is trending over a period of time, but also compare the applicant's health to similar age and same gender applicants. So reference ranges and charts with all sorts of information that allow for an underwriter to quickly determine how risky an applicant is. We also, throughout anywhere in our application, have implemented a hyperlink function. Wherever an underwriter is, they're able to click on this little arrow button and be taken to exactly where in a thousand pages that that information was extracted from. And the heart of our software, the single page summary, with all the information necessary for an underwriter to make a decision combined into a single interactive and dynamic page. So a company we're currently working with, a Fortune 500 company, receives 500,000 applications spread across 100 underwriters. Based off of this, we're able to determine exactly how long they currently spend on an application. And with Informatic, after extensive product testing, we're able to determine they're able to save 34% of their underwriter's time, or almost $1.8 million in a net value of savings, and an ROI of 3x. But Informatic's value doesn't stop there. All of a sudden, this company's underwriters, sorry, this, under, this company's sales agents are able to focus on new client acquisition rather than being worried about the medical record review process. Their most important and largest clients, which are the ones that we are taking care of, are receiving their policies in a significantly faster turnaround time. And the company's sales are through the roof due to the fact that they're able to process significantly more applications when using our software. We've looked very deeply at our competitors. And we're proud to say that we are the only solution in the market that's specifically catered to life insurance carriers. We're not repurposing a software that was created for an alternative industry. We created this for your companies and your underwriters. There are a few features that allow us to do so. First, the fact that we're able to provide a rate classification and a suggestion on how risky an applicant is based off of all of our extracted and summarized data. And then also, the underwriter platform that we provide, where an underwriter can go through the entire life insurance underwriting process and application review process on our platform. We're also the only company currently that's charging a fixed cost for summaries rather than a per page or per document, resulting in a very cheap alternative to the current solutions. And our processing time is significantly faster. We're able to provide summaries in minutes rather than days. Some of the companies we're currently working with include Mutual of Omaha, who we have a letter of intent signed with, Pack Life, and Salmon's Financial, who we recently just passed their two-step vendor risk assessment process, proving us to be SOC 2 compliant. But after all these interviews that GIA has provided us and mentor meetings and dating, we've realized that life insurance isn't the only place where we can apply this software. Long-term care insurance, disability claims, health insurance, all these places have medical records that need to be reviewed. And that's where we really see ourselves shining. So Tan and I have had the opportunity and have been honing our skills. Throughout a variety of different software engineering internships, we've honed our product development and customer discovery skills. And alongside our very experienced advisors, we're excited to bring the first catered solution to life insurance carriers. So please, join me and join my team Come talk to us, see our demo, and join us in eliminating the manual document review process from our industry. Thank you. Now, please welcome to the stage, GIA Alumni Director, Jim Lewis. I would... Uh... I would say that the state of the GIA and the future of InsureTech is in very good hands. Uh, I'd like to give one more round of applause for seven amazing founders. Thank you so much. So it's my distinct honor and privilege to welcome you to the alumni, which I happen to have been blessed to be one of them up there. 
and you're in very, very good company, and so is uh, the GIA. These organizations have been uh, some of the best of the best over the past nine years. We're getting ready to enter our 10th year. Many of you would probably like to meet these companies again, because if you think these are great, there are some others that are very good that have continued to mature. My role is to help connect you with them. And to that end, I'd like to share that we've, we've evolved the look and the feel of the GIA. It makes sense. We're entering our 10th year. And part of what you'll see now, if you were to go out there, is a new website with a lot of great new material. There's much more coming, but it's uh, much more in line with the future of the insure tech world and with the GIA. Uh, I'd like to let you take a look now at uh, a video we have that uh, will tell you a little bit about our story. Calling all visionaries with big ideas. Yeah, you, the founders, the disruptors, the problem solvers. We know you have bold, smart ideas that could solve a giant frustrating problem. If you are among this rare group, we'd like to meet you. We are the Global Insurance Accelerator. We work with early stage insure tech startups that are building disruptive products and technologies for the insurance industry. We give founders the initial investment, deep insight, and connections to their future customers to fast track the idea into a success. Our accelerator program and the ongoing support leverages a powerful ecosystem of experienced mentors who are insurance professionals, prospective clients, insure tech investors, our alumni founders, and even regulators. And our own corporate investors are among the largest, most innovative insurance companies in the world. Just ask the founders from all over the globe we've been working with over the past decade. They saw the advantage of being part of a mentor-driven, insurance-only accelerator. We're located in Des Moines, Iowa, one of the global epicenters of insurance. There are more than 200 top insurance companies located in our state, and Des Moines is one of the most startup-friendly cities in America. So if you are an early-stage insurtech startup, this is the place to be. We are the global insurance accelerator. We live and breathe insurtech, and we are looking for you. Apply now and let's get started. The Global Insurance Accelerator, transforming big ideas into big breakthroughs. So one of the new roles of the GIA is to help our alumni after their 100-day accelerator program. That's my role, but it's also everyone's role in this room, and I'm going to ask for your help. We're providing ongoing programs topics, events, and there's a lot of opportunities for many of you and many of your colleagues to help us. So I will ask you in a minute to, to join us. But that's a very exciting new development for the, the GIA. One of the things I would also share is that there are a number of other ecosystems that we work really nicely with. We all get along. This is definitely a rising tide, lifts all boats kind of an industry, and I love to be part of this. The, uh, you'll start to see, if you'll allow us to give us, give us your email, as you'll see in a minute, we'll give you invites and invitations along with our alumni and our founders to allow you to continue to see these great new ideas and developments. I can tell you from experience from standing right here four years ago in their shoes, terrified, that your life continues to evolve and change and gets much, much better. And without the help of the ecosystem, it's not possible. This is why I decided to come back to the GIA, and Brian and Nicole out there, uh, I thank you for what you did to create this, and Dan, thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Our why, I shared this the other night, a why is the most important part, in my opinion, in any business. I ask the founders this, every one of them knows this too, and that is, that what is the reason that you're starting your business? What is that it drives you? Because there are going to be some challenges along the way, and if you have a strong why, you'll overcome those challenges. You'll fight through it. You'll find a way. For us, the, the GIA, it's all about our unique position of being able to filter, refine, and connect the early stage insurtech startups. Many of them who have never had a check or an investment before don't possibly even have clients. But we'll help them. We see their potential. And the reason that we do this is the world's a dangerous place out there. There's a lot of risk and there's a lot of bad things that happen. If it were not for insurance, 
many of these industries would not even exist. And if it were not for innovation, to continually find new, better ways to make the world safer and smarter, we would not be able to continue to evolve. I want to thank the University of Iowa, especially Dean Amy Christoph Brown, for joining us and joining a partnership. We're very, very excited about this. There are many of you that should join us too. I'd ask you to, to go ahead and use your phone, grab this on your QR code. Do that if you see on our website as well. Let us reach out to you. We would love to get more of you involved. It's important. And uh, again, to the founders, I want to say well done. And to the rest of the audience, thank you. I do no longer want to stand between you and happy hour. Thank you very much. Please welcome back to the stage, Vice President and Head of Platform Manchester Story, Jason Gross. Yeah! So, Jim, uh, you left me hanging there, so now I get to be the person standing between you all and cocktails. But, you know, I was just thinking back that uh, it was nine hours ago that Aaron Pierce, my co-chair, and I stood on the stage and welcomed you all to the 2023 symposium. I don't know that we could have packed any more into these past nine hours. What a fantastic day that uh, uh, of, of thought leadership, of discussion, so many great speakers and panelists and, and, and audience as well. Thank you all very much. Just four quick things. Uh, if you thought today was great, just wait until tomorrow. We have the icing on the cake. We will start back at 7 a.m. with a networking breakfast. We'll be back in this grand ballroom at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning with a commissioner panel, a CEO panel, and a founder panel to round out the 2023 symposium. I've also been asked to share that we have a lost and found item. Someone left a blue sweater at the registration table earlier today. If you are missing a blue sweater, you may find it at the registration table out in the lobby. I'd also like to uh, encourage everyone, if you haven't already, to please do go to your uh, ITA group app for the conference and vote in the case, student case competition. We'll be announcing our winners uh, from the, the, the three finalist teams tomorrow morning, so if you have not done so yet, please get your vote in. And finally, I think after this long day, we, we deserve a break, so please join me, Aaron, our committee, and all of this great group at American Enterprise from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock for uh, an evening reception. It's like 75 degrees out. It's going to rain later, but it's holding off. The sun is shining for us. Let's go have a, a drink. Uh, there'll be food trucks. Uh, I'll see you at American Enterprise. It's just uh, a couple blocks away, and we'll see you there. Thank you all very much. <laughs>